How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to go over the Facebook Pixel Helper Chrome extension and how it can help you to increase your marketing efforts and understand what others are doing to market so that you can kind of market backwards and understand how you should be setting up your campaigns. So this is a really awesome way. I'm a firm believer in the idea that you should just find what's working in the real world and then model it rather than just trying your own type of campaign all the time because when you find what's working you can pull out the principles or even the tactics and then apply them to your own industry. So right here on my screen I've got three examples of using the Facebook Pixel Helper that I wanted to show you today. And the Facebook Pixel Helper here it is up in the corner. It's this little Chrome extension right here that just tells me when I'm on this page I click on it and I can tell I'm, I have a page view on this page, ebook funnel download. I must have done that a long time ago because I don't remember doing that but it still remembers that, which is pretty impressive. So it knows I've downloaded that, and then it knows that I'm a non-bouncer, that I, I'm staying on this page longer than normal. So longer than someone that's just bouncing. And the way that you can download it is just going here and Googling um, Facebook Pixel Helper, and you'll come here to the Google Chrome store. I can link down to this in the description, and then right here, instead of saying remove from Chrome, it would say add to Chrome. And then once you refresh or exit out of Chrome and then back go back into it, you'll just see this up here. And if you're on a website and it's gray, it means that there's no Facebook pixel on this website. But if it's blue, like it was on this one, it means that there is a Facebook pixel. And essentially what the Facebook pixel does is it is a piece of code that you just inject into your site or it allows you as the advertiser or the advertiser to match your profile on Facebook, your account there, to your activity on their website. So they know what you've downloaded, they know how long you've spent on their website, and they know that you're interested somewhat in their products. So let's look at a few examples. The first one here is this Bliss company. I don't really know anything about this company, just that they do e-commerce. I looked up this, like 40 amazing examples of e-commerce website design. So if we come here to the Bliss page and click on the Facebook pixel, we can see that they have a pixel. And right here, it's tracking a page view, and it's also tracking that I tried to search something, which I think I clicked on by accident earlier but you can see how fast the load time was, the pixel code showing, the pixel location is showing, and, and then the frame. I'm not really sure that's more like uh, coding jargon. It's not too important. But then you can see here, all of these yellow signs with the exclamation marks, these are events that haven't happened on this Facebook pixel because I haven't added anything to my wish list. I haven't become a lead. I haven't completed a registration, which in this case would be like adding something to my cart, I believe, and then I haven't added my payment info and I haven't started a checkout. So if you're an e-commerce store and you're building a Facebook campaign, what you could do in here is target, let's say you have a, a large number of people coming to your site. This really doesn't work that well if you have a small number of people coming to the site. But you, you have a number of people that have come to the site and they've added their payment information on your site but they haven't checked out. So what you can do is build a Facebook campaign that targets just those visitors. That's what the Facebook pixel is for. And right now we're not able to just steal their code and, and plug it into our website, but we can see these are the important things that this website thinks that they should targeting or understanding about their customers. So if I come here, let's see there's, if there's a place where I can become, uh, let's try becoming a lead. So, or if I just click add to cart here, add to bag, cool, and then I'll go to checkout. So now if I come here, you can see I've got page view, search, and I've initiated checkout. So if I add my payment information or if I add my email here, which I'll do, this is like an older email that I'm phasing out, just say continue as guest. Then when that loads, I should be a lead. Let's see if I refresh it if it works. So it's not working. That means that that specific action of submitting my information there isn't connected to the Facebook pixel. And so they don't know, Facebook wouldn't count me as a lead in this case. It would count me as an initiate checkout. That's probably how they'd have it set up just so they don't get this one and this one confused. So that's a great example of an e-commerce website and the Facebook pixel is so, so smart for an e-commerce website that's selling something all across the country or across the world and has a lot of website traffic for the Facebook pixel to work with. So now let's look at an example of some, like a local business and, and how that might look with the website. So I've got these ads up here. I don't want to click on those because it's going to, Google will charge them, but let's see, this is 
myplatinumdental.com. Okay, so we come here and they do have a Facebook pixel on your website, you can see that. But the only thing it's tracking here is a page view and it says microdata automatically connected. So that microdata is like that Facebook, it's connecting me to my Facebook account right now. So if I come in here to same day appointments, I'm guessing that there, these don't do anything. So let's go to about us. And it's still just a page view. So these guys have a really simple Facebook pixel setup, which isn't bad at all. If I go in here and just say, set my appointment, same thing, come in here, I'll just put in testing. And guys, this is totally fine to do something like this. People are used to getting bogus leads. So you can go ahead and test their Facebook pixel test their, their stuff so that you can understand kind of how everything works there. And then watch also to see what ads you get coming in your Facebook feed. So if we click here, so I'll just say testing, email address, testing123 at gmail.com, one 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 uh testing. And then I click send message and it looks like it's only detected my button clicks. So this website hasn't set up their pixel in a way that when I've submitted this information, it's putting me in a different Facebook audience, which is honestly fine for a small website like this that's probably not getting a lot of traffic because they're not going to need to have a huge retargeting audience. So if anybody's visited their website, they can afford to pay the extra two or three cents to so show them an ad even if they have booked regardless of whether they've booked or haven't booked. So now let's come here to the Squarespace website. This is a website building platform I've used before. And let's say I want to build a website. So they, they do have a Facebook pixel and all they're tracking is page view right here. So if I scroll down some Facebook pixels, looks like this one doesn't, but if I scroll down, the, the Facebook pixel would know that I've, I'd viewed content and it might trigger that as well. So I click get started here and it looks like we've got four things happening up here. So we've got a page view, which was the original thing, and now it's view content. So it knows that I viewed content, it knows I'm, I'm more interested in the product than just the average person that's bouncing. So we've got the button click automatically detected and that's, uh, that's not a big deal. So let's say I want to use this here. So it's detected my button click again, and then let's say I come in here, insert my same email address, and then click create account. Now it's taking me into the website, and click start. And now look, look what we've got. So we have a page view, I've become a lead, I have my first login, and I've become a purchase. So in this case, I, I really haven't purchased before. I haven't purchased anything from Squarespace, but it's counting me as a purchase because I started building a website. So they probably have a different function that will fire when I actually put in my credit card and I have to pay for something. So there you have it. That's how you use the Facebook Pixel Helper to help you understand how other sites are using their Facebook Pixel. It's an awesome piece to have in your marketing arsenal. I know that I use it all the time just to kind of in the back of my head if I'm visiting a website and I see that they have a Facebook pixel, I know that they're going to retarget me or they're just building up an audience or that they are somewhat savvy when it comes to marketing. So there are bad examples and there are good examples. As you get this on your Chrome and you're going through and trying to understand how other people market, it's a very helpful tool just to get your brain into more of a marketing mode and start understanding how the websites pictures and words and all of the things that go in to try to influence you to purchase their product. I really hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you got some value out of this video, leave a thumbs up and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.